everyone, Helen here. Welcome to the Mousy Makes podcast. This is my little place where I chat to you about all the crafty things that I do and um, lots more besides. <laughs> so uh, it's lovely to have you here today. And as I record this, I've not long got back from my week's holiday and I'm looking forward to telling you all about that in a little while. Uh, but I think we'll start off just with a little bit of a crafty update. <clears throat> and I have finished the no mittens. Hurrah! Um, actually, if you follow me on Instagram, you will already know that. I managed to get those finished before I went on holiday. Um, and if you watched the, ep the oh, couple of episodes ago where I was talking about the no mitten, I just finished the first one. And I was a bit grumpy about it because it just seemed so lumpy and yeah, I wasn't really all that happy with it apart from I love the pattern. Anyway, I decided to just press on with the other one and got that finished. And the blocking process did a really great job. Although yeah, some, somebody made a lovely comment um, on that episode where I was showing you the first one. Uh, and they said I could call the mitts the grumpy, lumpy gnome mittens. I really like that. I might call them that anyway. Uh, anyway, so the, yeah, the blocking process has really ironed out a lot of the lumps, so it's not too bad. They're not perfect. In fact, another thing that I noticed as I was blocking them was that the the thumbs are different. I did have a bit of a problem with with the thumb. Not, I don't think it was really the patterns problem. Um, it was it was me not having great experience of doing that sort of thing. Yeah, but the the thumbs are actually odd. They're slightly different shape and uh, the pattern is slightly different at the top. I seem to have finished at different points, although the thumbs seem to be the same length. So I don't know how that's happened, but I'm sure that when I'm wearing them uh, that, you know, nobody, unless they want to examine them very closely, is is going to notice when I'm walking along with these mitts on they're just going to go oh look at all those little rows of cute gnomes <laughs> so yeah so I am very happy with those and um, it makes me look forward to some cold weather when I can wear them so uh, the yarn that I used was um, Knit Picks Palette 4 ply which I've only ever used for making small toys before um, but I'm really happy with how they've knitted up into knits. I mean, they'll be nice and cosy anyway. And yeah, I think the lumpiness that was created as I was doing the colour work was all probably my inexperience with doing that kind of knitting. But I'll keep practising. So those are the known mittens. So um, holiday, I took, for holiday, I took uh, three projects with me. And two of them I can't really show you, but I'll talk about them anyway. So one of the projects I took was uh, the pair of socks that I did tell you I'd started last time and which um, I said I couldn't show you because I know that the person who they're for will be watching this. Um, one of the things I was telling you about them was that I was going to do for the first time, I was going to knit a contrast um, cuff, heel and toe. Well... There is the contrast cuff, but I have to confess that on both of the occasions when I was coming up to the heel and coming up to the toe, I was in Skype calls and I completely forgot that I was going to do the contrast colour. So these socks will just have contrasting cuffs. Next time I make some socks, I shall try a bit better and concentrate better and not do the heel and the toe bit when I am in a Skype call or anything. So that's those, they're going quite well. I'm about mm, halfway through the second sock, so that's good. Uh, I do need to get a move on because of a Christmas and I've got at least two more pairs of socks I need to make before Christmas, so get a move on with those. And the other project that uh, I took away with me that I can't show you um, are, is the Mystery Gnome Knit Along that's being run by Sarah Shearer who's the designer of all the gnomes that I've knitted. Oh, I haven't put any gnomes out here. Oh, oh sorry about that. Uh, I've only got Mousy here. Gosh, you can't even see. Now you can see Mousy there. Yeah, that's Mousy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the gnomes are still sitting on top of the piano, I think. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I'm doing the mystery gnome knit along. 
this is the seventh one that Sarah Shearer of Imagined Landscapes has run, but I only came across it this year. Uh, and uh, we, anybody taking part in it is asked not to share any photos of it, so no spoilers until a certain date when everybody hopefully is finished doing it, because not everybody might keep up with the clues that are given out about every other day. Um, <clears throat> but I'm really pleased with how it's looking. I can show you the yarn um, I'm using. This is a, I don't know, the colour doesn't come up so well on the camera, but that is a kind of a very a uh, deep kind of pink, plain colour. Then I'm using this leftover sock yarn, which is variegated. And you have seen, probably, if you've seen that episode, the socks that I knitted with those is lovely. And then just a, a, a plain cream yarn there. Uh, so I can't wait to show you my gnome. I'm, I'm really happy with it. It's lovely. But no, not yet. But uh, when the time is right, you'll get to see that gnome. And then finally, the third project I took with me was the crochet Yuletide blanket. And I, I didn't actually get as much crafting time as I really hoped um, while we were away. Um, however, you know, I've made progress. I'm, a, I'm up to about round, if, if you know the Yuletide blanket, which lots of you do, uh, I'm up to about round mm, 56, I think. So there's about 20 rounds to go, but they're going to take a little while because obviously it, it is a square. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a square blanket. And so obviously each round is taking slightly longer than the round before. Um, but uh, that was it was a lovely project to have away with me especially at this time of the year when, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of a blanket. It's big enough now to keep your lap warm while you're busy making it. Um, what shall I say about it? I mean, I think it is quite a straightforward pattern. And obviously, Lucy of Attic24, who's the designer, does brilliant uh, photo tutorials of how to do everything. So that you've really got no excuse <laughs> for getting things wrong. But... Um, Yes, I have gone wrong a few times. One thing that happened just was a simple one that I missed out uh, one of the colours, which I think was sage. So I just uh, slotted it in later when, when I was not doing other shades of green and nobody will ever know. Uh, and the other place that, I've, that I keep going wrong if I'm not concentrating is when you get to the corner because on... Um, Two of the rounds, the corners consist of, uh, and this is UK terms, two trebles, one chain and two trebles. And then on the third round, you just do one treble, one chain, one treble. And if I'm not concentrating on which round I'm on, then sometimes I've done the wrong number of things at the corner. But the great thing is that you can, you can fudge it when you're using with your yarn and um uh, knitting or crochet you can usually get away with it well especially in a blanket um and as uh, i think it was dawn said on uh, the dawn's days um uh, podcast that i mean it's highly unlikely that this blanket is going to spend any of its time spread out on the floor in a you know in showing its uh, true shape <laughs> it's going to be wrapped around people or laid over the settee or something so uh, it doesn't really matter if it ends up a slightly odd shape, does it? It's, we're just going to enjoy the gorgeous colours mm. and the cosiness of it. Um, and just in case you don't, you're don't, you not familiar with the blanket, it's knitted with um, Stylecraft Special DK. And it just makes a really nice blanket. I like it a lot. Um, so I think that's new. Oh, yes. And the other thing that I was going to say about the blanket is, blanket is that I am weaving in the ends as I go. So probably every, yeah, uh, every few rounds, uh, I kind of I crochet over the end. But then I also like to get a needle and sew back and forth another couple of times weaving it in. So there's no chance of it working its way out. Um, I don't actually mind sewing in ends all that much, in fact. But I don't really want to get to the end of the blanket and then have a zillion ends to sew in. So that's why it's nice to do it as you, as you go along. Yeah, so those are the projects I took with me. Actually, the, there was a fourth thing that I took with me, which was um, this. 
which is my little new little um, travel watercolour painting kit that I've put together especially for taking away on holiday and I bought a little a little watercolour sketchbook here especially for taking away um, and I didn't do any painting at all so I'm a bit disappointed about that I think it was mainly the weather that that caused me to not do that um, I, I'd had dreams of sitting out in the sunshine outside the boat and sitting and painting but no the weather didn't allow for that never mind so on to my holiday I think so we hired a narrow boat for our holiday uh, on uh, from a place called Shire Cruises which is um, in a place called Sorby Bridge in West Yorkshire, which is in the northwest of England. And it is actually not very far north of Manchester, which you, you might know. You might know it very well. Some of you I know do live near there. But I, my geography of that area is a bit vague and I didn't even realise I was going to be that close to Manchester. I could have arranged to meet up with somebody who I know from YouTube and Instagram. And yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't realise where I was going to be. Uh, never mind. Um, uh, another time. Uh, so yeah, so that's what we did. And there were five of us who went. So there was Phil, who's my husband. And then my son came with us and my sister-in-law and her partner. And Phil and I had, um, done a few narrowboat holidays before. This was actually our fifth one, so we were feeling quite experienced. Um, and my sister-in-law and partner had, it was their first time, so they had lots to learn, but they were great. Really, really enthusiastic, and they just uh, um, engaged with the whole thing. It was really great. Yeah. And we did have a lovely time, but the weather was absolutely awful, was really awful. Um, we did arrive on the Saturday in sunshine and we had a beautiful day on the Sunday. Uh, but after that, I don't think it stopped raining, or well, not much anyway. Uh, some days were absolute continuous rain and other days there were some sunny intervals, but you never knew when it was going to suddenly chuck it down with the rain again. So, yeah, that was a bit of a shame because, you know, you can't help but be outside it's uh, for Phil and I, it's really the perfect kind of holiday where it's a perfect combination of slowing right down because uh, um, a narrow boat rarely goes more than about three miles an hour. And yeah, so you slow down, but you also have lots of activity because you have to be out um, opening and closing locks and things. And uh, yeah, so you get to spend a lot of time outdoors as well, which in the rain is not so good but never mind we did go prepared for the weather but uh, <laughs> yeah we were very very wet at the end of each day oh dear me uh, fortunately the narrowboat was nice and warm and cozy it had heating and we were able to dry everything off um, in the evenings so it wasn't so bad and actually there was another um good um outcome from all the rain because in the earlier part of the week um, there was a problem with some of the canals uh, areas. Some areas of the canal were just didn't have enough water. They were short of water. Um, and um, so there were some places where it was barely enough, barely deep enough for us to actually move along. We did get stuck a couple of times. Um, but by middle of the week, when we'd had so much rain, there was no problem with the water in the canals. <laughs> so... <laughs> was really good. Uh, we were on the Rochdale Canal um, and we did achieve our aim of getting right to the very top because um, you just go up and up and up and up the locks. They're all going up um, until you reach the summit, a place called the Summit. And so we did manage to get there and hopefully you can see a photo of me now uh, looking very wet but at the summit. So oh, that was good. And then after that, we didn't go over the top because we didn't have time to go down and then round back another way. We had to go back the way we came. Um, but that was great. Uh, yeah, so um, 
I thought that before I actually give you a bit of the cruising along the canals experience, you might like to have a look inside uh, the narrowboat in case you haven't been in one before or you just want to see what, what ours was like inside. So I'm now going to attempt to give you a little tour of the inside of the narrowboat. So here we are at the stern of the boat. And if you look across the top, you can see it is quite long. It's actually 56 feet long and about eight feet wide. So here we're gonna go down inside, down these quite steep steps and into the double cabin here, which is where I was sleeping. And you can see I've brought something to make me feel nice and cozy and homely. This is my uh, scrappy blanket that I made. So a really nice, really nice room there. Good cupboard here, nice and roomy. Plenty of storage space really all together and place for wet things to be hung. Then if we go a little way down the corridor next to the double cabin there, here is the first of the two bathrooms. And in this bathroom, you can see that there is a basin, a mirror there, and a toilet. And on the other side of the bathroom, a shower. And it was an excellent shower. Uh, there was never any problem with having enough hot water. So it was really good. Kind of a bath shower you could sit down in it even at a very high side and then you had to pump the water out afterwards when you'd had your shower okay so that was the bathroom and then along the corridor a little bit further to the single cabin here single bed which is where my son was sleeping and you could also have a bunk above it but we didn't need that so they took those out for us you can see the key side up there and the little shelf there and then at night time lots of these doors that were bolted back through the day you could use them to partition off the cabins And then there on the left is another single bunk, which we didn't need, so it was just used as a storage area while we were there. And, yeah, there were more shelf storage. We really had plenty of space to store our stuff. And then here we have the second of the bathrooms. This one doesn't have a shower in it. This one just has the toilet and basin. But really useful to have two bathrooms. And then into the galley, you can see some storage shelves there. And here we had a um, full size grill and oven, a gas ovens, oven and grill, and even a microwave, which you could only use while the engine was running because it uses a lot of power. In fact, we didn't use it. And we've got the washing up area here, a nice view out onto the canal. And yes, you can just about see. I think there, there's another Shire Cruisers narrowboat across the way. And here we have the gas hob. And storage underneath. And they provided all of these plates and bowls and pots and pans. The boxes and tins there contained our own... Uh, home baking that we took with us. And there's the fridge, full size fridge and freezer, little freezer in the top of the fridge. And then this was the dining area, or just sitting around area. 
can see I took another of my uh, crochet blankets, that's the Attic 24 Sweet Pea blanket, and that table was removed at night time and um, used as part of the double bed. And we can see we had a television which we didn't use, and there were some stowaways, two gnomes, I jumped into my luggage. And then we had Mousy there, who was there at my invitation, and here we are at the bow which has got seating for when the weather is dry. Nice place to sit when you're going along slowly. So we stopped off at all sorts of lovely little places along the way, along the uh, route of the Rochdale Canal. And we also had a really, really uh, great uh, visit to somewhere very well known uh, on our way home that wasn't far from there. Uh, but I'm gonna share those with you next time and uh, because I don't want to make this too long and we're just going to go off onto the canal I'm going to play the piano for you and hopefully just give you a flavour of, of what our holiday was like so let's go onto the canal so lovely even when it was raining it was such a nice holiday so I hope you enjoyed coming along with me there no doubt you will see more uh, canal boat uh, video in the future I think I took so much and I haven't used all that much in that sort of short uh, little video that you've just seen um, so I will be back again very soon next week and until then Keep yourself busy, take care of yourself, and I'll see you soon. Okay then, bye.